making on this topic of artificial intelligence. Uh, fancy word like say, but it's uh, not new. It has been in practice since many years. And we'll take our Indian scenario. This is a routine photograph of our general hospitals that people are standing in a queue to get a case report uh, done, then to get the reports done. So there is a shortfall of approximately 4.3 million doctors and nurses. And how do you manage that? Then I will go through this slide and you will end up that really artificial intelligence is really helping in healthcare. And we are still using the old fashioned solutions for our new problem of uh, ever increasing number of patients because of increasing lifespan. And it has been predicted that this artificial intelligence market would be of dollar six billion in 2020. And it will be saving significant dollar two billion by this tech enabled processes. And you will be using one of this probably you will be using it in your daily life like Google or Amazon or Airbnb. Well, they already started using artificial intelligence. They track you and give you much better results than uh, whenever you start uh, searching something. So it is in voice recognition, image recognition, natural language. So why not in healthcare? And this was a some summit which was done. And if you see this particular part in healthcare, there are now companies which are dedicatedly coming in artificial intelligence. And we'll discuss on some of the companies of this healthcare in artificial intelligence. So what is this intelligent agents? It's a, any device that pursues its environment and takes action that maximizes its chance of success of some goal. So it just behaves like a human being and trying to come to a solution. Uh, there are some of the science fiction movies that you would have seen. This X Machina which was in 2015, Matrix, I, Chappie, Terminator and many more are coming. These are all based on artificial intelligence thing. So what are the seven aspects of artificial intelligence? One is that it will be simulating the higher functions of human brain. It will be programming a computer to use a general language. It will be arranging hypothetical neurons. So it is practically thinking in a manner so that it can form concepts. A way to determine and measure problem complexity. So if there is a problem, it will try to find out solutions. Self-improvement. So it's not a mechanical thing. It will try to find out a different solution if it, if it is given the same problem again and again. Abstraction. That is quality of dealing with ideas rather than events. So it will self think and randomness and creativity. So that is what artificial intelligence is all about. If we go to the history, then this was the computer uh, which played against the famous Kasparov in chess in 1996. There were litigation later on by Kasparov that uh, IBM had modified the computer. But it was a computer which played and it read thousands of moves and suggested the best possible move. The, if you can see the number of uh, positions that it was the computer was taking was 200 million positions per second. And you can read this and uh, if you go into history then after that the IBM came up with a new more sophisticated computer to play against the next uh, chess player and uh, it also again won. So what is machine learning and what is artificial intelligence? Then it's a two little bit different terminology. Artificial intelligence is much more than machine learning. And it's a broader concept where we consider the machines as smart. While in machine learning, we are given, machines are given access to data and they are made to learn by themselves. Either it may be supervised, unsupervised, semi-supervised or reinforcement learning. Supervised means you are learning telling them to learn what and you know that the outcome is a particular X thing. When in unsupervised, you give it them data and the machine will give some results that is unsupervised. Semi-supervised is in between that and reinforcement learning is sequentially interact and learn some things and then factor to improve your decision making. So everywhere through, throughout the day also we have talked about data, data and data. And you know certain softwares that are available or mobile apps which are available which recollect data and try to give you some answers. Uh, the commonest I think many of us would be using is haptic. Okay, if you just write in that mobile app that I want a ATM nearby. So it is trying to search nearby and it will give a data. Or another is this Google Maps that it will give you the real time data of the number of the traffic or the vehicles who are flying on a road. Similarly it is for our medical part that it will give us various information that I will discuss in the next slide. So it is again a artificial neural network, just like our brain, there are a network which is formed on the basis of our human brain giving a, instead of the dendrites and neurons, it will be the silicon and the wires as living neuron and dendrites. 
So if you see on the left, there is a diagram in which a patient's data is being fed, that is height, weight and the temperature. And if there is something abnormal, the machine is going to give you a click and say that the patient is having high temperature or the patient is sick. So there is something where is we put input, an engine which will be processed, so it's like a brain and it will give us an output or a provide a result. So what is required for our AI is, one is deep duper expertise. So that requires a significant research of the models for which from that we can arrive some data. Data science expertise, access to large data sets. So it requires to be connected to several things to find out what the old data or what was previously there. A good infrastructure by which you can transmit the data that is on the terabytes and industry collaboration. It has been shown by human uh, by study that doctors spend majority of the time doing the more of paperwork. So it was a study where they showed that in OPD, OPD base, 49 percent means roughly 50 percent of the time the doctor was doing the paperwork, and when they were in an examination room examining the patient, they used to spend only uh, 70 percent and 37 percent time they were uh, doing a paperwork. So artificial intelligence helps them to decrease your time in doing paperwork. This is a slide in which you can see that at present what we are doing is 54% of the time we will be doing coordination and control. 30% we will be actually spending our time solving problems of the actually of the patient. 7% we will be communicating and 10% would be strategy innovation. So innovation would be hardly 10%. But with AI our time of coordination would decrease by significant. We will be spending more time in solving problems. We will be better communicative and we will be able to better innovate. So that is the role of AI. In a journal of neuroscience in 2016, this was the article that AI may help in diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease early. Similarly, there are articles about to close the justice gap that you will not require a lawyer. Sorry, the lawyer is here and google wants to use this for uh, preventing blindness so it has tied up with uh, one of the hospitals of nhs uk and is ai still entering with us no it's already in there where we are practicing uh, it is there in pacemakers in implanted devices if you see the ecg machines the interpretations are automatic so you don't even need to go and think of it will give you some basic information that the patient is having acute mi on this particular lead so that is where the ai really helps and the algorithm becomes much more stronger as the machine goes on reading more and more ecgs and is this going to replace doctors no we are going to still remain but it is going to announce the role of our doctors and it will impact health management disease prevention doctor visits because it can read tens of crores of data in a very short period of time so it would be a symbiotic relationship between the doctor and the ai where it will generate analysis and give us probable diagnosis. It is up to us to decide which is the most probable diagnosis uh, from that particular relevant things that the AI has given to us. It would help in certain other areas like drug discovery because if you see in particular in antibiotics, none of the companies are now coming up with a new molecule. The basic reason is that the cost of developing of a new drug or a molecule is very high and it takes a long years and ultimately major regulations. But AI can help us in reducing this time and it can dis discover various new drugs with a short uh, course and money. Even in laboratory it has helped where it can give suggestions on basis of the data that is being reflected that the patient is suffering from so and so particular disease or a diagnosis. It has come up in spine surgery where this medicria is a group which has been approved only by US FDA and they have come up with this adaptive spine intelligence technology where they are now printing specific implants for spine surgery. So it is not a standard size of implants but according to the patient they will be immediately giving an implant and that would be fitted to the patient during the real time in spine surgery. It has also role in emotional intelligence particularly to detect depression, ischemic heart disease just by recognition of the voice of a person that if I am happy my voice would be different if I am dull or uh, I'm having some emotional problem, then my voice would change. So that AI would have play a role. Google is working with uh, this subsidiary of its, that is Google DeepMind Health, where they are tied up with the Moorfields Eye Hospital, and they are detecting the eye problems much earlier. And their fundamental is based on improved equality of access, increased speed of care, 
potential for new methods and continue learning and improvement. IBM is not behind, they have also tied up with Cleveland Clinic and to find out new insights particularly in the in electronic medical records. Some of the new other companies that have come up in the market are this care score where they have 39 million patient records and they are claiming that <coughs> they have analyzed already 4.5 million, uh, million data points. They have a particular algorithm and what their concept is that because of this data they can find out whether the patient will require readmission or not and that helps in really saving a lot of healthcare cost. Zypher Health, this is another startup where William King was the owner and he is the director of this Zypher Health and he, does, he has been awarded a, a significant big award by Pharma Voice magazine for uh, this artificial intelligence. A Ancora Medical is a Philadelphia based startup where they help in deciding the radiation treatment plan for each particular patient that how much radiation the patient would be requiring avoiding side effects of the radiation. Centrion is another similar where they are going to uh, be finding out the patient before they are actually becoming sick. So this is like a preventive thing and it harvests patient data from more and more widely available biosensors and teaches machine to do a dedicated work. Cloudnex Health, they again put physicians at their own actual work rather than doing a data entry and they use various algorithms, machine learning and natural language processing. Other than this, where artificial intelligence is helping is insurance. If you are working in a setup where you are having cashless, then you would have found that whenever you want to admit a patient of a cashless and get a cashless approval, it takes really a lot of problems communicating with the insurance company, getting a claim done, getting the documents done. So there also artificial intelligence can help where you can actually have the patient's data immediately whether the patient is eligible communicate with the third party agent or with the insurance company get the approval so the duration of that getting an approval or getting the treatment done would significantly reduce and this has been shown by various studies that the healthcare cost involved in this all medical part is significant by 15 to 20 percent analytic is a another company where they are in radiology and what they have found with uh, their specific algorithms and the machine used to classify a malignancy depending on that algorithm and a study was done where it was compared with a three radiologist and the false negative rate where a cancer was missed was significantly less than compared to the human radiologist who were interpreting that uh, malignancies. In cyber security it really helps particularly it can be self-healing and it can detect the viruses or an attack much earlier there were ransomware attacks which were not only for the routine computers but they were also affecting our sonography machines because in that also it was a microsoft based systems which some of the sonography machines are running so in that place the artificial intelligence can help so the benefit of ai would be it is a much more faster accurate and it's preventive saves caregiver time by automatically record keeping and paperwork it's a potential for long term cost saving. Initially the cost of that um, AI or the technology would be high but over a long term it is much more cost saving and it gives a new insight into how genetic mutations create different conditions. To sum, summarize, it is not superhuman and it's not going to replace us. It is going to remain here but it's a set of tools to help them do the, our jobs. If you attempt to implement these tools without base practice and milestones and return of investment, you will most likely end up in a wrestling match with the vendor about how to get out of the contract. Thank you.